welcome to another Tune of the Month. Thanks for stopping by. Um, I've had a ton of requests from you folks um, to please do another waltz. So I'm going to do that today. Why not? I love waltzes. Um, and so I've decided to share with you another one of my like super, super, super all-time favorite waltzes. This comes out of the New England-ish, down East Canadian-ish. I actually don't know exactly what um, longitude and latitude this comes from, but that neck of the woods, the Northeast, and it's called the Gold Fiddle Waltz. So that's the tune. If you're just listening, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you next month. And if you're wanting to play a waltz, grab something that will allow you to play a waltz. Um, as always, I'm going to go through this, uh, break it down in little bits and pieces, but if you are one of those people uh, for whom it is helpful to have written sheet music, um, if you are a member of my email newsletter, I send out uh, my scribbled handwriting of uh, the two months every month there. So as soon as you set up, you'll start getting those and you can see uh, Boeing's and ornaments and things that we discuss in this video as you start to learn it. Okay, so the Gold Fiddle Waltz, as you may have noticed, is in C major. And you also may have noticed that while I was playing it, I was kind of uh, switching around where I do ornaments and switching around some bowings. Um, I'm using all basic patterns of, of both left-hand ornaments and right-hand bowings that we've talked about in previous Tune of the Month video, so um, this month I'll show you a little bit how to just try some different options and play around, because that's the fun of these waltzes, is to kind of come up with your own spin on it based on how you bow it and where you put the fingering. So we'll talk general principles today. But first, a tune. We're in C major. <laughs> by slowly enough at natural waltz tempo that you can kind of figure out what's going on. Uh, if you want to rewind and try it again with the video, you can do that. But I'll break it down. It's basically, as so many tunes that we do here, it's a part one, part two, part one ending sort of construction. I'm just going to start with a C major arpeggio in part one. <laughs> Just that much. C major. Now notice when I just did both of those, I did two different bowings. But what was similar about both of them is that these two pickup notes, I'm slurring up bow. So the down beat ends up on the down bow. That's the general principle I'm going to obey through this whole thing. Down bow. I may slur here to end up down bow here. 
here at the end of it as well. So you need to put a slur in there somewhere to end up, to start down and end down. You can be flexible about where it is. The second part, part two, we're ready to go up bow for the pickups. Again, ending down bow. And this is a, a G major arpeggio, G7 actually. The slurring principle for this, when I have that little note, it's a dotted quarter and an eighth note. I'm going to slur those together because if I do it separate, I'm going to get a whack on that short note. Um, I've been known to call it the beginner bonk, which is not nice, but um, descriptive. Um, you don't want little notes bonking in the middle of a beautiful smooth phrase. So if you slur it in, you don't have that bonk problem. We're back to part one. C major. I slurred them in to avoid the bonk. Here it is, it starts like the part one, we already know. C major. I'm gonna slur it in. And now I'm ready for the ending. G's. I'll do it again, ending. down bow. Um, and certainly if you have a fast tune, starting it up bow is a really bad idea. When you have a slower tune like this, that the whole bar coming up is going to be slurred into one. It's actually possible to start it up bow or down bow. If you go back and watch the fast version, you'll notice that I did one of each. And it depends on where you end up at the end of the A section, right? Because there are no pickups to that B section. If you end down bow, you're starting the B section up bow. And that's okay. Slurring the little note. Yeah, that's the first part. I love this melody. I'll start this one down bow just so you can see how I'll do it. Either way, I'm ending down bow. And then it's going to do exactly the same thing again. And that's the first half of the B section. Okay, so you notice this B section is an exception. It's not part one, part two, part one ending. It's part one, part one, snazzy stuff. And this line, this last line of the tune, second half of the B section, to me, is what makes the tune magical. Here it comes. Ending down bow. Alright, so you probably found that ending pretty easy. Slightly different bowing, but still ending down bow. The part that's probably got your ears perked and your eyebrows up is that noodly noodly stuff, right? And it probably sounds super noody. It's not. It's a bunch of arpeggios. Starting with C major. So... That's the first bar of C major. And notice I'm slurring the first three and then I'm doing the next one separate. So here are my pickups. Up bow. C major slur. C major separate. And now we'll do the same thing with an E major arpeggio. It's so magical. That G sharp makes it great. Now at this point, 
you will have drifted with those down bow slurs towards the tip. So here, it's going to reverse itself. With an F arpeggio, I forgot to tell you what it was. So those three together, C, E, and F. The bowing is the same for C and E, and then F changes. Watch, I'll put it all together. C, separate, E major slur, separate. Now stay up bow. And that little trick keeps you from getting choked up at the tip. I'll do it one more time. Sneaky, here's the ending. All right, here's the whole B section. I'll start this one up. Bo. ideas to play with. The one non-negotiable, well, it's negotiable, but the one less flexible part of the bowing is on the noodley arpeggios. Just because there's more going on and you don't want to end up trapped either at the frog or the tip. If you take a whole bunch of down bow slurs, you'll get stuck at the tip. It won't be so comfortable and harder to play smooth. So, there are some bowing ideas for you to play with. If you want to play with left hand ornaments in a waltz, and I'll tell you about this very quickly because uh, you have in previous Tune of the Month videos learned about the roll, the single note grace, uh, the double note grace from both above and below. Uh, if any of this sounds weird, just go back to the Tune of the Month. We talk all about it. You can take any of those options and insert them on any long note. Guess what? Waltzes are full of long notes, so there's every opportunity in the world to throw in a grace note wherever you want. So here's what I'll do. I'll play it to finish. Uh, I'll play it through a little bit slowly and throw some grace notes in where it occurs to me. And you can steal those ideas and find plenty more yourself. Here's the waltz. <laughs> as I know you're all becoming more and more experienced with, you heard I had mostly hammer-ons uh, in the Irish wording. Uh, I call it a single grace from below. You can put them pretty much everywhere. It's the simplest grace note and it sounds the coolest. I also did not add any grace notes to the noodly bit in the B section. Did you notice that? Because it's so fancy already, I don't need to muck it up with a bunch of extra stuff. So I just play smooth and beautiful through there. Good rule of thumb in general, every time the tune gets fancy, you get simple. Let the tune speak for itself. All right, well, hopefully that gives you lots of ideas to play with, as well as a beautiful waltz that we can jam together when I meet you out on the road, wherever it is, and we bump into each other, you never know. I hope you all are having a great month, and I'll see you, um, well, next month. Bye.